Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Boston Balling. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbutt. I hope everyone's off to a great start to the week. The holidays are around the corner, so hope you're all starting to think about your holiday shopping. I know I have to start getting on it. I'm always one of those people who waits to the last minute to get gifts, but I am not going to do that this year, or at least try not to. Um, so I hope everyone's, um, you know, doing well. Um, excited to bring you another episode of the show. I have a special guest with me today, he's done a lot in the sports industry. He's been with the Boston Herald, had a um, Patriots podcast. He's kind of done a lot of different things. Adam Kurgian, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for hopping on the show. Uh, definitely. I know we were just talking off air about uh, car stuff and how stressful yeah. it can be working on cars. So that's uh, yeah. definitely frustrating for me, but I'm glad that that all went smoothly for you today. And we are able to uh, sit here now and uh, do, record a fun episode. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm ready to talk some pats and stuff, whatever you got for me. Yeah, no, I appreciate you um, hopping on here. I know you, um, you know, you do a lot of Patriots coverage on your Twitter and um, you definitely do a good job with that. Um, so I always enjoy, you know, uh, seeing what you uh, think about certain things related to the team. Um, so obviously, you know, it's been an interesting season for sure so far. Obviously, there was, you know, Mac getting injured, Bailey Zappi stepping in, whether they were going to stick with him, they were going to go back to Mac. So there was all that drama that kind of occurred. Um, the division is really, really competitive this year. I think a lot more competitive than people expected, at least yeah. um, my, I mean, my, me personally and my friends, we were talking about it and I don't think people pick the AFC East to be um, as tight of a division as it is right now. So definitely want to hear a lot of your thoughts on that. But um, I definitely want to kind of start with just generally how the season um, has been going from your perspective, how you feel like, um, you know, about where they're at. Is this yeah. about kind of where you expected them to be at this point in the season record wise? Or how are you kind of feeling about that? Yeah, I think like I thought before the season, if I had to make a prediction, it would have been like nine and eight or eight and nine, like middle of the road type of team. I thought that's what their talent level was. And they've been about that. You know, I I feel like, you know, it, it, the team's been pretty inconsistent. You know, I, I think the, the offense as a whole hasn't been what it should be. I think um, Mac Jones has regressed a little bit. And so I want to see them in, in this last part of the season after the bye sort of figure things out on offense a little bit more because I think their defense is pretty good. You know, they have a really good pass rush. Matthew Judon's having a defensive player of the year type season. Love him. Um, yeah, he's great. And like, you know, last year he sort of tailed off towards the end of the season. So hopefully he can sort of, you know, get going again and, and, and sort of finish as strong as he started. Um, but, but I think to your point, I mean, I think you make a great point about the AFC East. I don't think anybody saw everybody in the AFC East at this point still having a winning record. The you Jets know? especially. I know. I know the Jets. I mean, like the Jets have been playing pretty well, even though they didn't do that great against um, the Patriots when they played them. But um, I think Salah is a, is, a, is a pretty good coach for them. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's sort of a wacky um, quarterback division because, you know, before this season, you know, you know, the Dolphins got all these weapons for Tua Tagovailoa, and he's really risen up to it. And I think he's he's always been a good quarterback. He, I, I just think it took him a while to get going in the league, and you know, um, he never had these weapons. And now that he's got them, he's really he's playing kind of how he did at Alabama, just like throwing a great deep ball and getting getting guys involved, and you know, being sort of difficult to uh, take down in the backfield as a sack, uh, you know, artist or whatever. So I, you know, I think these teams are pretty good. Like, I mean, the Bills are obviously a very good team. Everybody before the season was picking them to win the Super Bowl uh, or at least get to it. And, you know, I think that, I think the Dolphins are for real, you know, like I don't think their defense is outstanding, but I think their offense is outstanding. I mean, two is playing with like one of the best quarterbacks in football and he's got great weapons, and so they're going to outscore a lot of teams. Um, and you know, I, I, I don't, I don't see the Jets being able to sustain it as much. But look, you got to respect. I mean, they did beat the Bills a few weeks ago, um, 
And the way I look at the Patriots, I feel like they have all the pieces for a really good team. They just haven't come together yet. And maybe that's coaching. Uh, maybe they f- sort of figure things out as the rest of the season goes along. But I think they're a good team, and they're certainly capable of be- beating these other teams in the division. Um, it's going to be – I think it's going to come down to, like, these last few games – I think the the Vikings game is huge. I think the Cincinnati game is huge, and the two Bills games are huge. If they can find a way to split that even, let alone win, win three or four, then I think they're in really good shape. Yeah, I mean, with the Dolphins, you mentioned Tua, and that honestly was the big question mark for me with that team going into yeah. this season was whether he was the guy that can really fuel that offense because, you know, obviously they did have talent on that team Um, but they added even more talent going into this season. And so I was looking at that roster going into the season. I was like, if he can't work with those weapons and be able to produce on offense, then he probably isn't the answer for them at quarterback. And I think a lot of people felt that way, that they were hesitant about him and seeing if he could kind of prosper in that system um, with what he has around him. And I think they set him up for success more going into this season. So, yeah, I mean – I agree with you. I think the Patriots are right in the mix with everybody else in that division. Um, It's obviously really tight right now. And, you know, the Patriots being in last place in the division doesn't necessarily, you you know, people hear last place, but I don't really see them as a last place type of team because I think they're better than that. I think it's just because the division is so tight right now that they're in a spot where, you know, they had to figure a lot of things out at the beginning of the season and taking bad losses to teams like the bears is unacceptable. Um, Mm -hmm. When you're in a division, that's that close because that was a very winnable game that they should have won. It was almost like they just were sleeping on them and weren't really taking that game seriously. But I think that they, they're not really indicative of what you would think a last place team typically is. I think Mm -hmm. they're, they're a solid last place team right now. And I think with they're they're still right in the mix with the division. They are just as good as these other teams. I think you're right. I think they just have been slower to figure things out as opposed to the other teams. Yeah. It's just, you know, it, it's just been, it's just been sort of difficult to, uh, for them to get Mac going. Like, I mean, I really look at it like this. If, if it was the Patriots, not the Dolphins, who had gotten Tyreek Hill and all these great weapons, I think Mac Jones would be having the type of season that Tua is. You know, I think it's really that simple. You know, they, they they've had to make it work. I don't think they have terrible receivers. I also don't think they have great receivers. I think they have looked serviceable, good B plus type of guys. Um, so I mean, I you know, I think that. There's there's things they can do to get Mac going. I mean, I would like to see them with more play action with Mac, um, and and try to just get the offense going that way. I think you know this post these post by games are going to be interesting because you'll see what the Patriots think that they have to get better at and things things that they have to do to sort of get Mac off track. So it's um you know it's it's not easy to get it going because the NFL is so unpredictable. Um, but like you said, that, that Chicago loss is, is like, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And even that, even, even the, the Packers loss, I mean, um, you know, quarterback wise, that just switch things up for that game. But like the Packers aren't any great shakes right now. Like in, in, you know, you know, looking back on it, that's probably a game that they could have won as well. Uh, even though at the time it's kind of seen as like a moral victory loss. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of the whole Zappy coming in and right. all of that, I think there was a lot of, you know, little to no expectations going into that game. Right. Right. But now looking back on it, like Packers aren't that good, you know? So, um, you know, I'm excited to see how the, the, the season plays out. But like I said, I think I look at the, these last games and I think, you know, Minnesota, Cincinnati, the two Bills games, those are probably the their hardest games left on the schedule. Uh, I think they can beat Arizona pretty easily. I think they can beat uh, you know even even a team like the Jets. I think the Patriots sort of just you know have that team's number. Um, so it's it's just about sort of what you know 
you know, breaking even or doing well against those really good teams. Um, but you're right. They're not your normal last place team because they, they don't have a last place record. They have a winning record. And if that, you know, it's not like they're three and six right now, you know, they're, they're five and four. Um, so I think there's a lot of hope for Patriots fans in this season. It's just been such a, it's just been like, like you mentioned the, the zappy stuff, like that, made everybody kind of lose it because pe- people were like crazy about this zappy guy. And then he sort of like came back to earth. And so people are just like, wow. And I feel like this season has been so difficult for Mac because I think he's still the guy, but he's had to sort of question that at so- certain points along the way, even the fans with all the zappy chance when, when Mac is in the game, I mean, yeah, I felt bad for the kid. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, cause it, it was, there was so much passion in the stadium that night for Zappy. And so you feel, you know, you feel bad, but um, I think some of that has died down, which is good for the team because you, a, you know, a quarterback controversy can be really, uh, it, it can really hurt uh, guys' egos and stuff like that. So I, I'm, you know, as long as Max, st- you know, cuts down the turnovers and stuff like that, I, I still think he's the best option the Patriots have. Yeah, and I think people were not realizing that it's a good problem to have, not a bad problem to have, that the fact that Zappi was a great person to step in and he kind of pulled the weight while Mac was injured and kept the team afloat while Mac was injured. And then you also have Mac, who's a talented young quarterback too. And so I saw it as more of like, we have two solid young quarterbacks here in the system right now. Um, So if anything, that's just a good problem to have as opposed to a bad one. And I think people were, you know, yeah, people were definitely harsh on Mac because they saw Zappy come in and it was just, the offense seemed really connected but also the strength of schedule during that time, obviously a lot of um, not to take any credit away from Zappy because for him to go into Lambo and look the way he did was pretty impressive. Um, but he did have some of the easier games on the schedule during that stretch. Um, so I definitely think it's, it's, you know, a good problem to have. I think um, I was a little surprised during that bears game that Mac was on as, as short of a leash as he was. And they put Zappy in after that. And I think that created more confusion for the fans as to what direction they really wanted to go in with the quarterback position. Um, but then obviously, you know, they get to the trade deadline. They don't do anything at all at the trade deadline. Um, so were you surprised at all that they, that they just kind of sat still and didn't do anything? Did you thought they were going to make any moves? Cause I thought there were some players that, you know, maybe would be moved, but to me, they, their main focus seems to be continuing to develop Mac in the offense he has right now. Yeah, I think, um, I guess I was a little surprised. I, I you know, I, I think that maybe they felt like we like what we have, but we need to, tweak we need to make changes we made we need to you know you know get things right um because i don't think i don't you know and i also don't know if like there was that one turning point type of player that they could have picked up that would have made a huge difference i'm sure there was somebody i just didn't you know didn't really see that um but it's good i mean i think I think it's you're right. I think them concentrating on Mac and getting him right, getting the offense right, and figuring that out is job number one. And they maybe didn't want to bring another name into that mix. Um, again, the offensive line too has been sort of hit or miss. Um, so I don't know. You know, I think I think concentrating on Mac and getting him right is 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 the right thing to concentrate on. Um, and again, I feel like the defense is where it needs to be. I mean, I think it's better than it was last year. And I feel like, you know, if they can continue to that trajectory with the defense and just get a little bit better on offense step by step, then they'll be sort of where they want to. Yeah, I feel like, you know, um, when I, I saw this trade deadline in general, I feel like there weren't a ton of drastic moves overall. I feel like this trade deadline in general was not as interesting as we've seen in past trade deadlines in general. I think there's definitely, obviously there were some, there were some big moves that I saw that I was like, wow. Um, but I think overall it, it just wasn't as, as 
you know, there wasn't as much action as past trade deadlines, mm -hmm. I feel like, um, overall across the board. But I think that really does tell me that they really trust what they have and, and what they've kind of built up with this team going into this season and that they really feel like they have the tools that they need to create a team that can be competitive. Because some people are like, well, they didn't do anything at the trade deadline, so that means that they um, don't. They just don't care about being a playoff team. They don't think they're going to be a playoff team this year. But I actually don't think that that's the case necessarily. I think because they feel like – they have the team that they need right now to be able to succeed. And they feel like Mac, maybe with the system, they want him to focus on the weapons he has right now and be able to get acclimated with those guys and be able to work with them more so than trying to change up the offense at the trade deadline. And maybe they felt like that just wasn't what's best for um, Mac and the offense at the time, because where they were at at the trade deadline, it, it was too soon to pull the plug and be like, well, they're definitely not going to the playoffs this year. So I really don't see them not doing anything as a move for of them being like, oh, we we just aren't going to make the playoffs this year. So why should we make adjustments be, um, because we're just not going to compete with the other teams? I act actually don't think that that's the thought process that went into that. Yeah, I agree. And look, the, look at where they are. They're right there. You know, they're like one what one game out of first place. Yeah, you know, and the whole division's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and they still have one game with the Jets, one game with the Dolphins, two games with the Bills. That's four. That's like that's 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 a big chunk of the division be, to be played. And so I think they're good with what they have. I don't know who they would have gotten rid of, um, but I think you know they feel like I think they should feel like they're in a good position. Um, you know, obviously, like. You know, I think I think teams like the Bills are more talented, and I think you can say the same too with the Dolphins if you're talking about offense. Uh, but I think the Patriots have one of the best defenses in the division. Uh, they have one of the best defenses in the conference they're, they're, and, and football. They, you know, they know how to, you know, stop teams and, and create turnovers and get sacks. So, um, you know, I think they have a good squad. It's just it's just a matter of milking what they can out of this talent and it's just a matter of you know taking that next step and, and finding out what they do well and i'm pretty confident that in the second half of the season you'll see improvements there i could be wrong if they don't they're not going to the playoffs but if they do they will yeah and uh, and i mean you know honestly going into the bye week they went into the bye week with hopefully a lot of just positivity and momentum because they had a great win against the Colts going into the bye week and the defense was really a standout in that game because that the defense had a phenomenal showing in that game against the Colts and I think if they can if they have that type of display on defense going forward that's that's they're, they're tough to beat because the Colts couldn't get anything going offensively no. um and so that was nice to see because that's when you you realize like this team actually does have a really good defense and on it obviously you know I hate to go back to that Chicago game again but the defense did not look good in that game it, everything was discombobulated just in every as aspect of the game Chicago just played better no. um, but so you know which is frustrating but you look at games like that Colts game and you're like wow this is a really good defense and I think the team obviously sees that and they're like, yeah, if we can continue to play defense like that, we do have a team that can compete with the division. So obviously, you know, they had the Colts and now they had the bye week and, and then a big game against the Jets this upcoming Sunday. Um, and that's actually a big game. That's become a big game because that's that's that could completely change the standings based on who wins that game. I mean, the Jets are either going to be in first or last, depending on the results of mm -hmm. that game. Yeah. which is which is crazy to think about are you worried at all about um that game because of the fact that they had the bye week or do you feel like they're going to actually come out better because sometimes you never know with the bye week if a team's going to come out rusty after having it or if they are actually going to look better and i'm more along the lines of i think they actually are going to be good they're going to be better. Yeah, I, I think so because when you do when you go on a bye week you sort of take inventory of what you have and what you need to do to get better. And I think it's a good way to get, it's obviously a good way to get 
healthy and sort of rested and come back refreshed and ready to go. Um, and they also, it gives them a longer period to just concentrate on their next opponent as well. I don't know if the whole two weeks that they were doing that, but I think, you know, it's possible. And I think in general, the Patriots do respond well after a bye week. They are usually way better. They are the second half of the season than they are the first half of the season. And if that holds true, I, I think they'll, you know, beat the Jets. But you know, I'm, I'm, you know, it, the Jets are sort of uh, an interesting team because I don't think they're like, like, like I don't think Wilson's like a great quarterback. He's like he's decent, you know, and he can he can have good games. But like you know, he didn't play well against the Patriots when they played last time, and um, and, you know, Belichick's always good against a young quarterback, so. Um, but I, I do feel like the Patriots sort of have their number right now and the bye week is going to help them. Yeah. I mean, Wilson just has really bad numbers against the Patriots. He really cannot bad. beat the Patriots. And, um, you know, I'm with you. I don't think there's anything special about him. I do. I do agree with you on a, from a coaching standpoint, I think Salah's a great coach for them. I think they're definitely moving in the right direction and it obviously shows based on the season they're having this year, but I'm still kind of waiting for that Jets collapse that I do anticipate is eventually going to happen just because I just, I'm just not seeing them at the same level as the other teams in the division still. I mean, the games that I watch of them, yeah, they're having a good season right now. They got off to a really good start, but just talent wise, I still feel like they're kind of a step below the other teams in the division, which is why I think it's so surprising to everybody how well they're playing right now. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, that's a, that's one of those games that I'm looking at this Sunday as being a really important game when it comes to, you know, playoff implications. Cause the Patriots somehow have managed to find themselves in the um, playoff in the playoff talk right now. Um, and so I think, I'm looking at this game on Sunday as one of those games that because that result could really change a lot. And it's it's just with this division and how close this division is, they really need to take advantage when they're playing those other teams in the division now at this point. So I'm looking at this game on Sunday as that first start that this second half of the season, hopefully they come out and they show that they they've cleaned stuff up because this is kind of how it happened last year. I feel like they. They started off slow. They were not good to start the season. And then they started to really clean things up and show that they were figuring things out until obviously when they played Buffalo two weeks in a row at the end of the season and everything kind of came crashing down um, at that point. But Buffalo is just a phenomenal team. But I do feel like this game against the Jets on Sunday is really important. Yeah, it is. I mean, they have to show that they've improved offensively. That's really what you got to be looking for even more than a win or a loss because, you know, they're not going to make a big surge at the end of the season if their offense is still sort of scuffling like it's been. Like it's just not – they have to – they have to figure out what works for them and use it. Um, And, you know, I I think another player that has played well for the Patriots that is somebody that they can look to more is Ramondre Stevenson, the running back. Yeah, he's, he's had a great year. He's had a great – he's really excellent. And, you know, it's – you know, I think he's unlike some of the running backs they've had before because he's sort of a breakaway threat in addition to being just a solid between the tackles runner. Like, he can he can make a long run. Um, and he's – you know, I, I think he's somebody that has to be really involved for them to be successful the second half of the season. Yeah, I I love him. I think, you know, at the beginning of the season, I was like, I feel like he's somebody who has so much to potential to have a breakout season this year. Um, I think from a productivity standpoint, he's somebody that Mac could get the ball to pretty consistently. Um, that could really help move the chains offensively. I also really liked the addition of Devontae Parker when they added him to the roster too. I think he's definitely somebody that I'd like to see be utilized. Um, and I think from, you know, I, I still kind of think they have Mac on a little bit too tight of a leash when it comes to throwing the football. Um, because last year he was on a ridiculously tight leash. I think they've loosened that a little bit, but I still would like to see them 
kind of let it go even a little bit more and let Matt kind of um, do his thing more because it just seems like they still are hesitant in certain situations to be able to trust Mac. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think with Mac, it's a, it's a question of turnovers. Mm -hmm. You know, he, like this year, he's been turning the ball over a lot. Um, And it's almost like they want to limit his opportunities to do the same thing. And they want to just make sure he's, not turning the ball over. Um, <clears throat> but I do think uh, you're right. I do think they have to sort of, uh, you know, let up on that leash with Mac and, and sort of just let him go. Um, show confidence in him uh, and, and just throw the ball out of time to Jacoby Myers. Cause I think he's the best receiver they've got. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, are you disappointed in the lack of receiving depth? Because I feel like this has been a problem um, with this team this is something that was a problem last year and going into this season people were hoping that they would do more to address the receiving core and I personally am a little bit frustrated with that because I still feel like obviously you know Mac like you said the turnovers are a problem he does have his own issues but in a lot of situations it's like who is he supposed to throw the ball to I just don't know if they've really set him up enough to be able to succeed and I and I feel like that stems from not having a deep enough receiving core. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I think that their receiving core is decent. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. They don't have like that. They don't have like a like I said with earlier with the Dolphins. They don't have a Tyreek Hill type guy mm-hmm. like that number one receiver who's always going to be open. You know, they don't have that type of guy. But they, I think they have a good serviceable group. But I do think. You know, you do have to kind of look at what happened with the Dolphins and say this is what's possible. You know, if you are aggressive in the off season, trying to get top shelf receivers, you can get them, and it can really help your quarterback. I mean, I mean, two. I mean, Tagovailoa like has taken off. I mean, he's a he's got the best quarterback stats of anyone in in the in the league, and it's yeah. because of the, that receiving core. And so, I don't think. I don't feel like this, the Patriots really operate that way with the receivers. They'd rather draft guys or get like mid-level guys and add on to them like that. And that can be frustrating if you're a Patriots fan. But um, I still think even with these guys, that current group, I still think Matt can be successful. Yeah, I mean, when you have people named Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle at, yeah. on your team, it's yeah. hard to not <laughs> succeed with people like that. Um yeah. And, you know, when the Dolphins got Tyreek Hill, I was like, yeah, that team's going to be good this year. I was like, I mean, obviously, I feel like Tua has yet to prove himself at that time when when they got him. I was like, Tua has to prove himself still because he has not sold anybody yet. Um, But I do think that that's going to help him tremendously. And it is showing. And he's, you know, he's really thriving right now. And um, it's hard to compare him in the season he's having to Mac because I have seen some of that on Twitter um, and it's like, well, Tua's shown improvement. Mac hasn't really shown improvement. But a lot of times people forget to take into account what a quarterback has available to them because that is obviously a big part of the game and it makes a big difference. And you can't it, – it's hard to just take Tua versus Mac at face value and compare the seasons they're having because Tua has more options, I think. Yeah, big time. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of people liked – to uh, um, when, when he was coming out in the draft, and people were sort of surprised at his like sort of average play the first couple of years um, before he had these weapons. But I mean, I kind of like, I kind of compare to his weapons now to when he was at Alabama. When he was at Alabama, he had unbelievable weapons. All those guys are in the NFL, and he, he did extremely well at Alabama. He was sort of like a point guard distributing the ball, um, and he threw a great deep ball at Alabama too. And he and people sort of expected said that like he wasn't throwing the ball well deep his first few years in the league, but like now that he's got those guys, he's he's doing it. And I think that's just sort of sort of a lesson of what you know an upgrade into receive after the receiver position can do for a quarterback. Um, and I, I kind of feel the same way about Mac because 
people say that Mac doesn't throw a great deep ball. I'm like, well, he doesn't have great deep ball receivers at the Patriots right now. I think he can do it. You just got to get those guys. Um, but again, I don't know how much of that is the Patriots offense and if they even want that. So, but I think it doesn't hurt to have it. Um, no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've seen glimpses of that with Mac too. Like we've seen him show that he is able to have that arm that can throw the ball deep downfield. But yeah, like you said, that's the problem. It's like, if you want to see him do that, like who do you want him to throw it to in that situation? Because he doesn't have that what a true wide receiver one that can really get open and catch the ball in that situation. And so obviously, yes, there are issues with Mac. I think that he has some pers- like problems personally that he needs to figure out on the football field. Um, and I think that that is an issue, um, but it's hard to just say Mac is the issue with the offense. Cause he's, he's not the full issue with the offense. And I think the way that the offense is designed they're trying to allow him to be able to succeed, but whether they have the pieces to allow him to succeed remains to be seen, I think still. Um, And I keep saying, yeah, let's give it more time, see if they adapt and they adjust on offense because they have to, they don't have a choice at this point because if they don't, they're not going to make the playoffs. Like you said. So this is the time now where we can kind of see they made it through the first half of the season. They had their bye week They're extra rested now going into this week. So let's see what they've done kind of in the last couple of weeks um, to try to fix what some of these problems were that they were having early on. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people have lost confidence in the coaching uh, with the Patriots because of the offensive sort of showing it to this point. But I still think, like, the guy who's in charge of it all is Belichick. So, and he's and he's a great coach. So, you know, people don't like Patricia. They don't like Judge. And I think, well, I don't think those guys can figure the offense out. I think Belichick can. And you know, I think he will sort of give those guys their marching orders. Um, And I think, you know, look, they have, they have the talent to pull it off. Like I think their offensive line can still get it together. And I think Jones is a good quarterback. Um, I don't expect to see a lot of Bailey Zappi down the stretch, but again, if it's, if it's a thing about turnovers and it becomes like, are you turning the ball over too much? I still think Jones can do that. So, you know, I think you could see Bailey Zappi down the stretch, but I sort of expect Mac to be the guy from here on out. Um, and, you know, I, I think, and again, like we said, Ramondre Stevens got to be a big part of this. Um, so I think the, you know, I think the Patriots are in a spot where they might not have played their best football in the first half of the season, but they're still, they still have a winning record. And they still have games with the teams ahead of them in the in the, in the AFC East, so uh, anything is still possible. Yeah, and those some of those games are going to be tough. I mean, I'm definitely worried about the Buffalo games. They have a great team over there. They had a fantastic game against the Vikings over the weekend. I thought for sure in that last two minutes that Buffalo had that game won. Um, so that that the way that that game ended was actually crazy. Yeah. Um, the Vikings are a good team. They they were definitely severely underrated going into the season. I think for good reason though. I don't think people really expected them to be where they're at. I mean, whether they come out of the NFC, I don't know. I think the NFC right now is a little wide open. I think there's a lot of teams severely underperforming in the NFC right now. I would put Tampa Bay in that category. Um the Rams I would also put in that category. So I think it's it's hard to say um you know who might come out of the NFC but you look at a team like the Vikings, that would be a huge confidence boost for, I think the Patriots and the fans, if they can pull off a win against a team like that, because they, they be, if they were able to beat the bills on the road, that's a legit, that's a legitimate team. That, that Vikings team is legit. So if they can, if they can take that game and win that game, that's definitely a confidence boost. And I feel like obviously those two games with the bills are going to be huge. Um, 
one of those games is actually coming up soon. It's a primetime game. Uh, so that should be interesting to see how that game plays out. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think it's, you know, they have opportunities. They just have to take advantage of winning some of these games. And especially the ones that I hate to say should be an easy win because nothing's easy these days in the NFL. Um, but games that are the equivalent to playing a team like the Bears, they have to just take advantage of those types of games. Yeah, and again, I kind of feel like the um, – the Bengals game is going to be really big because <clears throat> from a standings perspective, I forget what the Bengals record is, but it's, I think it's similar to the Patriots. It's like one or one game or 500 or something close to it. Um, so I think that game's going to be good because, and the other thing too is the Bengals, even though they're not, they don't have a great record this year. They're a super talented team, you know, oh, yeah. With Burrow and Chase, and even though Chase has been hurt, um, so it's you know, you know, I think that game is going to be key because that's playing they you're playing against a team that's sort of similar in the playoff chase. They're not doing really well, but they have the talent to do it. So if they could beat the Bengals and you know find a way to maybe steal a game from the Bills and do well against the Vikings or, and Jets and stuff like that, then I think they have a shot at it. But they can't, you know, they can't lose all the 50-50 games. Those games have to be at least a split. Yep, absolutely. I agree with you. If they do, because obviously now they have found themselves in that playoff hunt, if they do find a way to get into the playoffs and they're able to grab one of those wild card spots, do you think that they have the capability, if they are playing their best football, to make a deep run and beat some of these teams in the AFC? Or do you think you you would look at teams like KC or the Bills and be like, those teams are just too deep and the Patriots can't compete with those teams? That's a good question. Um, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I think they can play better than they've been. And I think they, I think if they played one of those teams in the playoffs – They'd have to play not perfect football, but like close to it. Yeah. Because I think those teams are just more talented. Like I think KC's more talented. I think, you know, the Bills are more talented. Even a team like Cincinnati is more talented uh, than the Patriots. So I, I, w- I wouldn't put them as having a like a deep playoff run in them. But who knows? We'll, we'll see what the offense looks like coming out of this bye week. If it is coming out much better, then they can play with anybody because I think their defense is very good, especially if Judon plays the second half like he did the first. Yeah, Judon's having a fantastic season. I mean, I I liked him, you know, early on last season, but then he kind of fell off. Like yeah. you said, he struggled towards the later half of the season, but he he really has been just the fire for that defense this year. He really has been the guy who's just making things happen and I I I think he's a fantastic player to have on this team. Um and so I think, you know, I mean, yeah, Casey's tough. I think I I I think Casey is the best team in the AFC right now. Um, I think you know they lost against the Bills head to head this year, but I think overall they look like the best team in the AFC. Um, you never really know what's going to happen though. I think a lot of people picked them to come out of the AFC last year, and then the Bengals kind of yeah came out of nowhere um and and beat them in the playoffs, which was fantastic for me because I don't like Casey. Um. <laughs> So it was cool to see the Bengals in the Super Bowl. Um, but, yeah, obviously you never know once you get to the playoffs, but they're, the Patriots won't get, won't even get there at all if the offense looks like it does now the rest of the season because the defense really has been what's keeping them in games and winning games for them. The offense has really not done anything spectacular really this season. Yeah. yeah the offense has just been sort of the sore spot. But, I mean, if you think about it this way, the offense hasn't really gotten going, yet they've still got a winning record. You know, it's because how good the defense has been and everything like that. So, you know, I'm just curious to see how they how they tweak things in the offense. they got to find ways to make things a little bit easier for Mac um, and just keep him out of, you know, throwing turn- throwing interceptions and making turnovers. So, um, again, I think – the, you know, the offense has 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 a lot of the right pieces, right? I think I think Max is a good quarterback. Stevenson's a good back. They have decent wide receivers. If they can just sort of put it together and figure out what works, 
you know, they're, um, they're in a good spot. Yeah, no, I think so too. I mean, I'm definitely still remaining optimistic about this team and obviously Belichick is Belichick. Like he'll make adjustments with this team. Um, you know, he's aware, I'm sure of what the, where the weaknesses were. Um, I think Mac has to show improvement himself um, too. And I think there's definitely better decision-making that could be going on from Mac standpoint too on the field. There are certain situations where I feel like he can make better decisions. So that's something I think that needs to be improved as well. Um, but overall, you know, they're right in the mix. Obviously they're not way behind everybody else in their division. So I think they really can make a push in this later half of the season. And especially with Buffalo losing on Sunday, that really helped the Patriots out too, even though they were on their bye week, because that makes the division much more attainable because I feel like early on in, you know, the first few weeks of the season, it really did look like it was going to be Buffalo and then everybody else. Cause Buffalo looked unstoppable when they started the season. And yeah. so I was like, is anybody really beating that team? But now that them losing a few games and especially that loss to the Vikings is making it seem much more attainable because now the division just seems that much closer since Buff you're seeing some of Buffalo's weaknesses now. Yeah. And you know, the way the Patriots beat a lot of teams over the years has been like, all right, we're not going to make mistakes. We're just going to do our thing. And when you make your mistakes, we're going to make you pay. Yeah. And, they, and that's kind of like a good way to do it in the NFL because every, you know, every football team makes mistakes. But if if the Patriots can even not have a great offense, but have one that doesn't turn the ball over and throw an interception, I think that's the biggest um, – point of contention with Belichick with Mac is that Mac's been turning the ball over this year and they can't play that, you know, you know, that clean game uh, if, if he's turning the ball over. So um, if the, you know, if the Patriots can sort of just sort of get back to that playbook of we're going to do our thing, we're going to you know not turn the ball over when you turn the ball over, we score. And then, before you know it, we win 17-14 or whatever. I think that's kind of what they want, and that's the main thing that's been holding Mac back. Yeah, 100%. No, I, I definitely agree with you. Um, there's definitely more potential there than what they're showing right now. Um, I think they have the capability, so it's just going to be a matter of can they execute um, in this second half of the season? Can they make adjustments accordingly? And um, I hope I hope that when they were on the bye week, they – used that to their advantage to really figure out how they can improve this offense to be able to match up with other teams. Because I think it's going to be really telling um, heading into these next few games, how they utilized having the, the extra week off this, yeah. this time around. Yeah. yeah. It's um, like, I think the bye week came at the right time. It's just as the schedule is about to get tough again Yep. and they'll figure out what they're best at. And, you know, again, find, find those things that they're good at on offense. And it's, I, I think, I think every year they improve towards the second half of the season. Um, now again, like, does that mean that if they get to the playoffs, they'll, you know, they'll beat a Kansas city or a Buffalo or a team like that. That's just a, like loaded with stars. You know, it's, it's so funny that, you know, other teams are sort of constructed around like superstars, you know, like, like Mahomes and, and Josh Allen, all these other guys, they, they're, they're, they're built around teams that have star power. I feel like the Patriots are just sort of like, we want a lot of B plus level players and not, you know, and that we'll have more good players than you because you can't pay your, uh, you know, lower, lower tier players to, to be as good as our, you know, mid, mid, mid tier players. Um, but again, I don't see them. Ha I don't see this as like a deep playoff run type of team for the Patriots. But I do think there's somebody, they're a team that can make the playoffs and can compete once they get there. You know, they they had a sort of bad taste in their mouth from last year, yeah. so I think they can have a better performance than that. I agree with that. Yeah, because last year obviously was just incredibly disappointing in so many ways. What we saw in the postseason from them, so I do think that they'll look better than that. They'll at least be able to be competitive in games if they go to the postseason um, and not let Buffalo just 
completely just mow over them the whole game because yeah. <laughs> that was that was tough. That was definitely tough, especially because we had just seen that very similar situation when they had previously played Buffalo in the regular season as well, like literally right before that playoff game. Yeah. So I think that was part of it too. But I'm with you. I think that they have they they, they have more potential this year going into the postseason than last year. So we just got to hope that they – really um you know buckle down in the second half of the season and we see the offense be a little bit less scattered and just more together yeah yeah I, again they this isn't like a a star-studded roster you know like i don't think any of that should surprise any patriots fan that like there would be an underdog against a team like buffalo or kansas city those teams oh, yeah. have a lot more talent but again if you do beat those teams it's because you don't make mistakes, you don't turn the ball over, the other team turns the ball over. And, you know, I, I'm curious to see how much Josh Allen, like what his second half looks like. Because he's, he, to me, he looks a little bit hurt. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of surprised he played on Sunday, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I was surprised too. I, I thought they would have given him the week off or something, but. We'll see how they manage him down the stretch. Maybe he's, you know, because he's such a big part of what they do. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That Bills team would be completely different without him. Yeah, and he, he's one of these guys, too, that can play in Buffalo weather. You know, like, he is, he is so fast for somebody his size especially. He's such a good athlete, and his arm is so strong. It doesn't matter how windy it is. You know, he can he can play in that. So I mean, I think they have a real problem if he's out. Yep, absolutely. That I, they're a much more beatable team without him. I feel yeah. like. Um, or or so, if he's only playing at like seventy five percent, you know. Yeah. Oh, I I completely agree with you. I think that's a huge factor for Buffalo. So it'll be interesting to watch that situation as the season goes on and see how that's handled because that that Buffalo team become becomes a lot less of a threat i feel like um when he's not at 100 percent. yeah yeah um but yeah so it'll, it'll definitely uh be fun to see how this all goes down and kind of see the rest of the season um how it plays out but i i definitely appreciate you um hopping on the show with me uh and talking about all this yeah it's a lot of fun thanks for having me on no problem. Just um, quickly before we uh, wrap up, just let people know where they can find you on social media. No. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm on uh, Twitter at Adam Kirkjian. It's A-D-A-M-K-U-R-K-J-I-A-N. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's pretty much I'm, a, I'm only there. I'm not like I don't, I'm not very uh, busy on Facebook. And I have I have like a personal Instagram post, but I don't do like work stuff on there. So I'm always on, always on Twitter. Um, and in addition to uh, my work for the Boston Herald is mostly uh, high school football and high school sports. And then I also uh, work with the football journal. Um, and that's all football, high school, college pro. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty much all into football right now. That's awesome. Everybody definitely check that out. Highly recommended. Obviously, he's super knowledgeable about football. Um, so hope you all uh, follow him on Twitter and, and support his work. But again, Adam, I really, really appreciate you joining me. Thank you. I had a great time and our cars are ready for the winter. Are they yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah>. Honestly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, yay, yay for that. For <laughs> um, but thanks, thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in to the show. Really appreciate all of you as always for tuning in. Um, hope you have a great rest of your week. Go Patriots, and I will catch you all next time. Have a great rest of your night, everybody. <laughs>